Hello everybody, welcome back. It is picnic season. This video does not only feature lots of fun easy recipes, but also some ideas for what else to pack besides food. I put together a little checklist with your guys' help that we'll get into towards the end. And if there's anything important that I've missed, then let me know in the comments. Yeah, that's, that's it for the intro, now let's get into it. Cold drinks are almost as important as the food, I would say. Here's a recipe for some super simple but delicious chai passion fruit iced tea. Add your tea bags to some sort of big jug. My, mine's just basic chai without the black tea leaves. So it's just a bunch of warm spices, essentially. Make some tea. So, you know, pour over hot boiling water. Add some sugar or sweetener and let this sit until cooled fully. If your chai comes with black tea, then remove the tea bags a bit earlier. Maybe let it steep for only 5 to 10 minutes, depending on how strong you want it to be. Any time longer than that, I would say is it might be too bitter. Now remove the tea, squeezing out the last bit of liquid. Then cut open a few passion fruits. You know a passion fruit is ripe once it looks like a giant shriveled raisin. Squeeze out the insides. Add them to the tea. Last but not least, add lots of ice. Take it with you in a cooling bag if you happen to have one of those. Also feel free to add some sort of alcoholic component to this. Um, but yeah, this was so good. Highly recommend. A classic thing to bring to a picnic is of course, a pesto pasta salad. And this one is so nice. Roast up some cashews in a preheated oven at 200 degrees Celsius for about eight minutes. Cook up some shortcut pasta of choice. I went for these um, cute little facile shaped ones. Now onto the pesto. To a food processor, add some sun-dried tomatoes. You could also use those super dry ones, which you would then have to reactivate by pouring hot water over them. But I can already tell you that they won't taste as good as the ones swimming in oil, of course. Speaking of, let's add some more olive oil to be specific. Add some nutritional yeast, some salt, a handful of basil, some garlic, the roasted cashews, and a bit of water to help everything blend. Yeah, I left mine a bit chunky, but feel free to blend it up until super smooth. Don't forget to drain your pasta. Add the pesto, mix it all up. I also cut up a bunch of cherry tomatoes here, added those, as well as some arugula. Um, and that would be it. Stop. It is so, so good. Next up, I tried to make Isabella's mom's grilled zucchini and mushroom cheese and tomato sandwiches. First off, cut up some zucchini into rectangles or circles or strips. Also chop up some mushrooms. Feel free to cook those two separately, like in two different pans. I went for the lazy route and just coated them with some olive oil, salt and spices together, frying them in the same pan over medium high for about eight minutes. To some spelt bread, I added some hummus first, then a couple slices of tomato, some of the grilled veggies, ooh, spinach would be super nice here, I bet, some fresh basil, some vegan cheese, and the other bread half. I let the sandwiches toast up back inside the grilling pan for two to three minutes on each side over medium high, pressing down onto the bread to get those nice grill marks. Leah suggested some classic tomato mozzarella basil skewers, but instead of mozzarella, she says to go for smoked tofu instead. I only had plain tofu though, and so I tried marinating that in some very salty brine um, to get it to almost taste like Greek style feta, kind of, sort of. First off, I cut up some, some firm tofu into cubes, adding those to a jar that could have been bigger along with some olive oil, some white wine vinegar, lots of salt, some garlic powder, or like one to two cloves of garlic. This might seem really, really gross, but the liquid from a jar of olives also goes in there, a bit of water, and feel free to add lots, lots more spices, maybe some dried herbs, some chili flakes, shake it up, and then place it into the fridge for 24 hours. Now it's the next day and the olive oil might be looking like this, but don't fret, Give this a good shake and then simply just drain the tofu. You can save the liquid in a bowl and use it for another round of tofu marinating. And then grab some skewers and add, you know, cherry tomatoes, basil, and the salty or smoked tofu. 
the marinade I saved here for this next recipe. These are some super simple caramelized onion, um, tofu, vegan feta pastries. This time I crumbled up the firm tofu so it would soak up the flavor of the marinade better. So again, add all the ingredients for the brine um, and let it sit in the fridge overnight. Alternatively, you can also just use some store-bought vegan feta, um, but I realize that not everyone has access to that. Cut up a few onions into rings, cook them up in some vegan butter over medium heat for 6 to 8 minutes. Season well with salt, pepper, chili flakes, whatever else you want. Grab a sheet of store-bought puff pastry, cut it into 6 somewhat equally sized squares, and then add your fillings. About one heaping tablespoon each of the onion and the tofu. Plus, I would highly suggest to also add a tablespoon of store-bought tomato sauce or pesto. Fold over the pastries, close them off with a fork, brush them with some plant milk or non-dairy cream, then sprinkle over some sesame seeds before baking them in a preheated oven at 180 degrees celsius for 15 to 20 minutes or until golden brown. Someone suggested Victoria sponge cake, which I think got its name from Queen Victoria herself. Anyway, for a picnic I thought it would be fun to make mini versions of this cake sandwich which um, you could even transport and serve in little glasses. This is of course not gonna be a super authentic traditional Victoria sponge cake, but super fluffy and spongy nonetheless. It's actually slightly adapted from my Taylor Swift champagne problems cake. Preheat your oven to 180 degrees Celsius and grease up two eight or nine inch cake tins. In a small bowl, combine some sunflower seed oil, some vegan cream or vegan creamer, some vanilla and the zest and juice of half a lemon. In a large mixing bowl, combine all the dry ingredients. Fun fact, apparently this recipe came to be in the first place due to the invention of baking powder in 1856. Pour the wet ingredients into the flour bowl and also add the sparkling water you just now remembered to add. Mix it all up until you have this consistency here and then divide the batter equally between the two cake pans and then bake everything until golden brown and spongy for 25 to 30 minutes. For the cream, I decided to make some good old classic cashew frosting. First off, you need some cashews that have been soaking in a bowl of water overnight and slash or boil them in water for 45 minutes to an hour. Drain the cashews, add them to a food processor together with some vegan yogurt, some raw lemon juice, some agave or maple syrup, some vanilla, and a pinch of salt. Blend this all up until super smooth. And there you go. Remove the cakes from the baking molds, and then using some glasses, you're gonna cut out little circles. And then you're gonna use those to create trifles or cake sandwiches inside those glasses. Ruby Granger, Cottage Core Dark Academia Study Queen. She sent me this recently, along with many other fun vegan UK treats that I finished so fast it's embarrassing. But really, there's no better jam in the world I could have used for this, um, especially because traditionally Victorian sponge cake is made with raspberry jam. Oh, but make sure that you only add the frosting and make the trifles once the cakes have cooled down fully. Maybe I should have said that earlier. Dust your cakes with some sugar and then pack these up. Or if you don't have to take these anywhere, then just serve them right away without the glasses. My friend Nina suggests that you go for little jars that have a fitting lid. That way you can close them and transport them more easily. Here's some more ideas for what to bring food-wise. Watermelon, cold watermelon, or just other fruit, I guess. Hummus and things to dip into the hummus. Croissants or some other bakery type pastries. If you want to go all out, you can try and make my um, my croissant crenetti recipe 
Link up here and down below. Some alcoholic drinks if you feel like it. Some more recipes on my channel that I think would be perfect for picnics. These apple pie flavored energy bites. In the same video, there's these gochujang sushi bites. Highly recommend trying those as well. This lemon turmeric cake. Bean wraps. Pizza rolls. All these videos will of course be linked down below. Okay, cool. Now that we've got the food and drink situation sorted out, um, here's some more stuff you might need. A blanket or multiple blankets, friends, dogs, plates and cutlery, glasses if you're feeling fancy, a speaker with good music, a link to my Spotify will be down below if you need some playlists, um, games, I don't know, bring a set of cards, uno, pen and paper, or if you're a person that's like active, a frisbee, a ball, sports. Someone said soap bubbles, notebooks and pencils if you just want to meet up to chill and draw or chill and write books. It's such a cute thing to do, meeting up with someone and reading side by side. Miscellaneous but important, sunscreen, hand sanitizer, trash bags, paper towels, also an idea of where you can go to the bathroom nearby. Maybe that's just relevant for me but I always gotta know where the toilet options are beforehand. <laughs> Nice, and that brings me to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks to all the people participating in this picnic questionnaire. And yeah, I'll, I'll talk to you very soon. I hope you have a good week. Bye. If it's in South, don't tell me I'm busy. I ain't in the mood. Don't know about you. Zoom to the city.